You've got questions. Well, we've got the man to answer them. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham Wealth Partners. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Buckinghammer. It is good to be with you, Bob. Good to have you. I've got a question. As you well know, the IRS recently released its long-awaited Secure Act regulations, and there's lots that people want to know about that. Indeed, indeed. We've been waiting for the better part of two years. Now, for those who are wondering, like, wait a second, I thought the secure, isn't that that thing that happened years ago? And it seems like it was ancient history because it actually was in December of 2019, right before the pandemic hit. And to me and to many people, right, anything pre-pandemic is like ancient history at this point. So it seems like so long ago. And the question is like, what are you doing now? Well, the way things work is that Congress writes the law. Then IRS writes regulations effectively to tell us what Congress meant when they wrote the law, right? They've got to fill in all the gaps. And so there were quite a few of them in the SECURE Act. Now, there's a lot of things that uh, we, we learned in the proposed regulations or that the IRS put forth. And certainly we, we wouldn't have time to cover them all here, but a few of the highlights um, if you can call them that. Uh, the biggest one would be, like most notably, would be the way IRS is proposing to treat the 10-year rule that's applicable to most non-spouse beneficiaries. As a quick reminder, the SECURE Act changed the rules for most non-spouses who are the beneficiaries of IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, from the standard stretch where distributions could be taken over a life expectancy to a new quote-unquote 10-year rule that requires accounts be emptied by the end of the 10th year after death. Well, for a long time, practitioners effectively believed the 10-year rule would be just like the five-year rule. In other words, twice as long, right? Just do whatever you want years one through nine, but whatever's left in year 10, you have to take. And then in early 2021, last year, the IRS put out publication 590. And in that publication, it included an example where it was talking about taking RMDs during the 10-year window. Now, that set off a firestorm and people went, wait, is this right? Is this right? And IRS quickly came out and said, actually, that's kind of a mistake. We're going to we're going to revise that. And they did. A few weeks later, they put out a new version of the publication that said the 10 year rule just requires you empty the account by the end of the 10th year. No distributions in the interim. Well, in these proposed regulations, the IRS doesn't go either of those ways. They go an even more complicated way from saying if you inherit from someone who dies before their quote unquote required beginning date, which for most people is April 1st of the year after they turn 72. So if someone died before that date, April 1st of the year after the year they turn 72, then the 10 year rule would be applied as we thought it would be. No RMDs, just get everything out by the end of the 10th year. By contrast, if someone inherited from someone who died on or after that magic date, the required beginning date, April 1st of the year after turning 72, then those non-eligible designated beneficiaries, those people subject to the 10-year rule, would have to take RMDs in each of those first nine years, just as they did before. And then in the 10th year, there would be this additional requirement that whatever's left take out. So much more complicated. And Bob, as you know, it's not as though people get RMDs right today. This is a head scratcher. Um, a couple of questions come to mind. I suspect it's not retroactive to the uh, enactment, to the signing of the of SECURE Act into law. So anyone who died after the RBD uh, between 2019 and now, well, effectively, there would be some relief for 2021 for those who made like a good faith effort to comply with the rules. Um, but beginning in 2022, those RMDs would be required. Now, it's worth noting that normally you're not required to take RMDs until the year after someone passed away. So this really only impacts people who inherited in 2020 and those who were non-eligible designated beneficiaries, so those with the 10-year rule, and those who inherited who were non-eligible designated beneficiaries who got the account from someone who died on or after their required beginning date. So it's kind of like if you're the mother's brother's other brother's sister's father's mother's uncle, and you live in this place and you have, you know, you like long walks on the beach, then this is the rule. I mean, it's very, very complicated. Now, we also got some other guidance there, in particular, one that was really uh, valuable. And, and, and by the way, I should say that 
I think there's going to be a lot of comments on those proposed regulations with respect to the way IRS is talking about implementing the 10-year rule. I would not be surprised to see that change. One thing I would, however, expect to say the same from the proposed to the final regulations is how surviving spouse beneficiaries get a special rule with respect to RMDs. In short, surviving spouses can wait until the deceased spouse would have needed to take RMDs in order to take an RMD from their inherited IRA. Normally, beneficiaries have to take RMDs beginning again in the year after death if they're stretching. Spouses can ignore that until the year their deceased spouse would have needed uh, to take RMDs. And what the proposed regs seek to clarify is that the spouse doesn't actually, ha- they didn't actually have to live beyond the SECURE Act. All that needs to be true is that if you were born, if that deceased spouse was born on or after July 1st, 1949, which means they turned 70 and a half on or after January 1st of 2020, when the SECURE Act first became effective, then the surviving spouse can wait until the decedent would have been 72. By contrast, if someone was born earlier than that, right, someone who was, let's say, born May 15th, 1949, so they turned 70 and a half in 2019 or earlier, then that surviving spouse does need to take an RMD by the time the deceased spouse was 70 and a half. Hmm. Lots of trips and uh, traps uh, awaiting folks, I think, on that one. By the way, uh, am I Tom Smothers or Dick Smothers? I don't know. (laughs) The other brother. The other brother. Fair enough. All right. So the key word, if memory serves, Mm -hmm. it was propose. What happens next? So we go into a comment period. And by mid-May, all those comments will be received. Given that it's fairly early in the year, this is sort of a big deal. I do expect the IRS to finalize regulations. And so for now, what I would tell folks is don't overreact. There are some, some good clarifications in here. Another one is, you know, we were looking at when would children be considered age of majority? Uh, The proposed regulations seek to create a uniform rule for all children in all states, regardless of whether they're going to school or not, et cetera, of 21. And so that would be critical for those younger individuals who inherit from a parent. Uh, Bottom line is there's a lot in here. There's also a ton of rules uh, relative to trust as IRA and 401k beneficiaries. So for those who are looking to protect assets using those vehicles, there could be some really interesting and actually mostly good news. The good news here is that unlike, let's say, Build Back Better, right, which we talked a lot about last year because there was a good chance that might happen. It turned out it didn't. This is entirely within the IRS's control, right? We don't need new legislation here. This isn't something Congress has to act. This is the IRS putting out, hey, here's what we think. Hey, American taxpayers and professionals, et cetera, tell us what you think of what we think, and then we'll come out with our final decision. And so I expect that to happen sometime here before the end of 2022. All right. Well, plenty more questions around that topic. And I'm sure if folks have other questions, they can do what? Well, let us know. We love questions. Let us know if you've got one about the law now, the law as it may be one day. You just want to know what's our favorite color or favorite flavor of ice cream. Let us know. Give us a shout. Email us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to tackling your questions real soon.